Oh, these guys. Um, it's probably going to be a whole lot of nothing here. No? Okay. In this story as well, do they have no name? I swear that wasn't the case. Okay. At least now I can Kirage everybody effectively again and use Mighty Guard and stuff. Nice to be able to do that, I guess. Honestly, I just need one move at the moment. I'm not going to double Kiraga. It's weird, Bart seems to go on like counter streaks where like for 10 attacks he receives he'll counter 7 times and then the next 15 he'll only counter twice. But I would like at least one Osmos for Kryl. There you got it. Right on cue. Come on Osmos. Wow. Okay. That was a surprise. Did good damage too. Wow, okay, now suddenly they're coming in with all the moves. They were just sitting there. What the hell? I should probably haste up as well. I didn't haste up, which probably doesn't help. Because I've only got 15 ethers left. MP conservation is, is going to be more important than ever. So I do want to take my time and make sure I do a bit of this. This one just busting them erogas, seriously. Age of Shield. I don't want to use... I don't want to... Oh. Sake. I was going to say, I don't want to waste MP on Haska at the moment, but his agility must be pretty high, especially relative to uh, especially relative to Kryl. I was looking at the ATB and I thought it was Kryl's turn first, but her agility is slack. Anyway, one Osmos is better than nothing. And there's plenty of enemies to face yet. I mean, they're all still generally not that difficult, so... I'm sure we'll get opportunities. Wow. That's just an incredible amount of damage. Sheesh. Bart's just... Oh. Bart's just keeping it simple. But yeah, I need Kryl to get that turn. I'm not going to attack in case it counters with um, Earthquake. Do not want that to happen. I'm not going to do anything with Lena at the moment. Oh, really? Sheesh. I'm kind of scared to... Because <laughs> I will die if... I'm pretty sure I will die if there's an earthquake. Let me just float at least one person. Maybe we can we can get away with it if only one person's floated before we start attacking. Right, let's go. I mean, once I do start attacking, it's not going to take long. He seems to be getting a lot of critical hits as well. I'm still going to try a cheeky Osmos here. You never know. Okay. 
Okay. But the next battle could launch him with an earthquake. <laughs> no. Okay. I feel like I should probably... Go for another Mighty Guard, just in case. At least it gets everybody floated up nice and quickly as well. I threw the Asuna in anyway, hoping it might work. Maybe it did. It just wore off at that time. Oh god. Okay, we survived it. But yeah, the, every time that critical hit comes in, it's like almost 5,000 damage. It's beastly. Look at that. <sighs> yeah. Now that we've given up on Necromancy, it's like a it's a straight run to the finish. Because I feel like we, we might genuinely just have to defeat almost everything in the game. I think in the in the Final Fantasy VI tower slash shrine thing, we literally had to defeat every single enemy in the game. But with this one, I don't think they're going to make us fight like little shitty random encounters, I think. So... That should be good. Oh god. Rip. Let me just return this battle. I forgot those little shits. Had reflect. So let's try this again. It seems to be like everything from the rift onwards, basically. Um, I'm not going to do no fancy shit with like trying to reflect and stuff. Or should I? You know what? Let's do it. Let's try some fancy shit. And then I can reflect the level 3... Twelve thousand, that's impressive. Oh well, there goes that theory. Okay, fine. I mean they all have reflect, right? Even the little guys. Ugh. Yeah. This could be an annoying battle. I should go for the mighty guard here, I think. Yeah, because they're coming in with big magic spells here. Hmm. If anything, I might even return here. I think I should be able to, to ride this one through. This isn't optimal, like someone having Reflect is it's a bit more annoying, but I think we'll be okay. See which one it hits. Okay, hit the the main man. But it does no damage until you take out the minions. Yeah, they're both definitely dead. Okay, now it's my time to shine, I think. Let me just see if I can do damage. Just throw a little... Some mini spells just to see what happens. Hmm. 
Yeah, because I remember in the storyline we couldn't do damage to it either, and then Gilgamesh came and like all kind of crazy shit happened. Um... What was the deal with this guy, man? Yeah, if even a thousand needles does nothing, you know that there's something weird going on with this one. But I definitely forgot what the thing was for it. This old works. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Now hopefully it doesn't last too long, but the minions might come back before I'm finished. Now I can get a Libra in. 66. Hmm, vulnerable to holy, huh? Okay, we get it, you're vulnerable. I tried. Because <laughs> these uh, rapid fire guys are just going to take it out anyway. I wanted to try and squeeze in an Osmos first, but... That's definitely an impressive amount of damage. Credit where it's due. And it took out the two rapid firers as well. That was nice. Hats off. It's one of the first times in, in a long time we've seen a, a flare that's been powerful enough to take out a freelancer. Yeah, it's pulling the moves now. I'm gonna I'm gonna mighty guard here. And probably just have these guys try and finish off before things get too dangerous. I'm not gonna screw around here. Because if those minions come back as well, it's gonna be messy. Okay. Uh Okay, still hanging in there for now. Um, again, like, no places to drop a tent, nowhere to put a save. Nothing. We got nothing. Just to make sure they're not a really vulnerable HP, we'll do that. Okay. Gonna keep pressing on. Let's go. I mean, we haven't fought like Shinryu and Omega Weapon and stuff yet. If we get Omega Weapon, we could be in big trouble. Oh, wait a minute. We did it? I see that you've returned safely. I assume that means you have defeated the Monster Wars, correct? Then I bestow upon you this token extolling your triumph. Receive Medal of Smiting. Okay. Is there anything left for me to do now? Oh. Was that it? <laughs> uh, does that mean like I get to do it again? No. Whoa. Okay. I'm, I need to check if I finished everything. I don't know. Because... Uh, let me check the best tree now. 93%. Yeah. So Enuo is there too. I mean, there's nothing after Enuo. He's number 323, so I think I've defeated everything. And my assumption is, especially like the final pages, everything other than 283, the final pages, like the final 
one, two, three, four pages are all filled out, so I think I might be done here. I'm going to double check all this stuff and then I guess I can I can start to wrap things up. It, it didn't end with the bang that I was expecting. I mean, if all of this stuff unlocked after beating like Omega Mark II, Shinryu and Enuo, I was expecting like, yes, I did die once, fair enough, but that was kind of a freak death. As you saw, the rest of it wasn't too bad at all. So that would be a bit of a weird and kind of underwhelming finale for it, but um, I'll find out what the deal is and I'll get back to you guys. For now, I'm going to put a save in here just to be safe. And then we'll find out if we really have finally 60 hours in if we've completed everything there is to complete in Five Fantasy V. Okay, my friends, I took a little bit of time to research what was going on just to be sure that I wasn't missing anything. And turns out that it was a bit of an anticlimax. Um, honestly, I would have expected something more. Like, it, I had it in my head that once Enuo was defeated and this final door opened, there was going to be like one final, like, super boss kind of thing. Maybe some kind of Neo Enuo or something. I don't know. But that obviously wasn't the case. So, even though, yeah, I did die uh, one time. Um, which was a bit of a, a silly, like, unpredictable RNG freakish death. There, there wasn't really any other bosses of note after Enuo, despite unlocking, like, another section of the Sealed Temple, which to me was a bit strange, but that's how it goes. We are officially done with the game, so there is nothing, I believe, left for me to do. Um, one thing that was in my head was the, the Chocobo guy, he gives you a Mirage Vest, I was kind of curious to like know if I could do that now, but I believe after a certain point in the story, uh, he disappears anyway, so I think I've missed that chance, but honestly I'm trying to think like what I've missed at this stage, and it doesn't really, nothing really stands out. I think I've done just about everything that I can do over the course of the last 60 hours. So I think um, there is one tiny little thing that I, that I can show you guys that I looked up while I was... Um, Trying to see if there was anything left to do. So let's speak to this guy again. This room exists within a structure constructed by the ancients themselves. From without, it appears to be no more from without. From without, it appears to be no more than an old statue of a head, some ruin of cultures long past. In truth, it is a transportation device between dimensions, accessible now due to earthquakes that rent the sea floor. Pressing the switch on the central pillar of this room will transport you from your well to that of the sealed temple. Okay. Let's see. Honestly, if I didn't look this up and I kind of randomly recorded this, I would I would probably I would think that it's another boss battle like some like yet another section or something. <laughs> I don't know. Is it going to be like emerald weapon? It's a statue. Yeah, I would have been convinced that that's a boss battle, but apparently that's like some kind of Easter egg. Apparently, that sort of structure slash structure looks like the the Easter Island statues. I think that's what it's based off. Um, I think they're like some kind of Easter egg. I don't think you can do anything. It just sort of appears on the map as just like a something on the map. I don't think there's any way you can interact with it. It doesn't trigger a boss battle. There's there's nothing really to it. So. It's just something that pops up. I believe it's a GBA version thing because it's connected to the sealed temple. But at least it gives you a tiny bit of extra story context for why it exists, I guess. So yeah, this is the, the thing. I think it's called Maui or something, or... Yeah. So you can't interact with it. I think that's about it. Let me go back down. I like the theme down there better. I love this thing. But yeah, this is... This is the end, my friends. One thing I will do... Um, I do want to check the bestiary, and I've, I've brought up a like a wiki page to see what I've missed, see if there's anything of note, because I think I'm at like, yeah, I'm still at 93%, so there is stuff that I'm definitely missing. Let's have a look. So even like number 19, it's quite early, so we'll have a little look through these. Um, number 19 is actually the Bandersnatch, interesting enough. I could swear I ran into a... Hmm. Area around Torna Canal, Bart's world, is what it says about that one. So, there's probably going to be like 10, 10 of these guys or something that I've missed. Okay, we've got number 41. Number 41 is just Sergeant. 
Karnak Castle. He's an enemy. It appears during the escape. Wait a minute, what the hell? Did I not defeat those guys or something? Maybe, like in my re repeat attempts, I ran past them or I ignored them or something, so maybe that's why. It's definitely an enemy I saw. 56. 56 is just called Prototype. It's another machine. Two islands southwest of Crescent World 1, Sunken Walls Tower World 3. This might be another one, um, Sunken Walls Tower. Is that not the one where you fight Gogo? -Go? So maybe again, in a repeat attempt, I skipped it so I didn't keep it in the best tree. Honestly, I think most of it is going to be like that. So 74. It's called a Treant. It's in Castle X Death World 2. And Strap Strapara, Strapara, Second World Outside Castle X Death. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if I encountered those. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Because there's enemies that look like them that I did encounter, but I'm not sure. This one, um, 79, is. 79 is Neo Garula, actually. You encounter it where? Big Bridge. A one time enemy falls at the Big Bridge. Its attack is Rush, which damages HP and drains its into Sap. That's strange. So maybe it's just it's a, it says a one time enemy fought at the Big Bridge, but maybe it's still a, a random encounter, so there's a chance that it appears or it doesn't. Honestly, I can't recall if I, if I fought it or not. But maybe I didn't. Maybe I was just unlucky and I didn't face it. It's a kind of mixed bag. Some I think I truly did miss, and some of them I definitely encountered. But they weren't present in this save. Were Snake, this one. Were Snake, Were Snake. Quelb area, World 2. Jackal, World 3. Okay. 98 is called Undergrounder. This one's like a millipede, centipede kind of thing, and it's found in the Guild Cave in World 2. Guild Cave. Did I go into the Guild Cave? Guild Cave is a location in Final Fantasy V. Existing only in Gallop's world, it connects the Kingdom of Baal to the mainland entrance of the Big Bridge. By following a hidden path in the south of the cave, you can find Guild Turtle Path. It's an optional area which has a great treasure of Guild, as well as dangerous and extremely powerful Guild Turtles, which are usually encountered every third step. Oof. The path may be completed multiple times with more Guild. I feel like this is one place I did miss. I did fight the Guild Turtle, but I think I might have missed Guild Cave, interestingly. Okay, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I guess that's one of the reasons why I missed this place. Why I missed this particular enemy. Interesting. Okay. Undergrounder. Moving on. I mean, it's a good way for me to see if I've missed any areas as well, actually. So, uh, the Guild Cave is probably one. This is Land Turtle, Second World, Area Around Moor, so it's a, it's a random encounter. I mean, there's 323 enemies and there's multiple reuses of the same design, so it's hard for me to remember sometimes if I've fought one or not, even if it's not appearing in the vestry. There's some I definitely feel like I've fought. This one's called Desertpede, but it's shaped like a scorpion. Pyramid of Moor, Area World 3, unsurprisingly. And then underneath it, 142, is Bullet. Okay, again, Pyramid of Moor area. So I guess for some reason I didn't encounter those guys. Maybe it just depends on the, the paths you take with like the sort of sand, the flowing sand bits. Actually, this is interesting. 144 is Raji Forms. This is the thing that you can summon as a Necromancer. Its main ability is Finn, and it can use Aqua Breath if you release it. So I think that's what we saw with the Necromancer. It's a weird choice, but I guess it's an undead magic beast, so that's why we could summon it. Using Oath. So these could be potentially Dueling Knight. I could swear I thought... This is in Fork Tower, right? Okay, it's got, it's got the same design as one of the other knights that I fought. Um, in the Sealed Temple. But yeah, this is called Jewelling Knight. One six six is called Iron Muscles. 
and he looks like a sort of a, a titan. He, he's got the same uh, character design as Titan. Fork Tower Right. Again, I guess I just didn't encounter these as, as random encounters. Fair enough. It's a shame, I mean, for a game with such a high encounter rate, the fact that there's stuff that you still just didn't encounter by chance is kind of a shame. 173 is called Frostball. World map between Istory and Rigol. Okay. So yeah, I guess thanks to how um, Final Fantasy VI's final shrine slash tower thing worked, I was basically able to complete the best three. But this one, it was kind of lame. Like, honestly, the, it was probably one of the worst things about the whole... Um, about the whole sealed temple. Like, after everything that we've done, it was kind of a, a bit pointless. If it was kind of like Final Fantasy VI's one, where you had to kill everything in the game, like, once again, then maybe. But, I don't know, this version was, like, neither here nor there. It was kind of pointless. 196 is called Corbett. It's, a, it's like an undead bat type, again. Uh, first world sea battle. Waters near history merge. Waters near history. Merge world sea battle. Waters southeast of Phoenix Tower. Okay. We don't really have that many sea battles, especially later on in the game. 197, probably another uh, water based yeah, sea battle. So these are this is a set of encounters I just didn't come across in the game. And Water Scorpion, that's the third one. So yeah, these are all sea battles in the merge well that you can encounter. 200 gelfish. So it's called gelfish, but it looks it looks more kind of flan like. It says it's a rare encounter. Only appears while sailing in the bottom left corner quadrant of the merge world in the same place as Villiers. It relies on physical attacks, though it can be controlled to use the question mark spell if a blue mage has not yet learnt it. If caught and released, gelfish will do nothing. Okay, so at least this one's a rare encounter, so I'm not too bummed out about not seeing that one. There you go. A bit more consistency here. Yeah, anything I've missed here could be interesting. 266. This one's called Abductor. Okay. Castle X Death, Castle of Bell, Castle X Death. Um, first encountered when the party arrives at Gallus World. He snatches Lena and Faris, and the player has to fight using only Bart's. If Bart loses, he is kidnapped. If he wins, Abductor will drop a chest. When opened. When opened, Bart is knocked out by sleeping gas, and the trio is taken to Castle X Death. This is one of the few boss battles the player is not required to win. The player meet next meets the player next meets Abductor at the Castle of Bal and is all, and it also appears later on as a regular enemy in the higher level floors of Castle Exdeath. What you mean to say I didn't kill this thing one time in the playthrough? So when it when it appears again at the Castle of Bal, I didn't defeat it again, and then I also didn't encounter and defeat it in the higher level floors of Castle Exdeath. That's strange. Wow. Okay, fine. But interesting that there's two different outcomes there. I didn't know that. What else? Surely there's not much left now. Um, 283. Carbuncle. Okay, we know all about Carbuncle. And I think that's the last one. We've got everything else. Okay. There we go. Alright, so I wanted to just show you guys what I missed as well, in case... Uh, you were curious, or it was relevant, potentially. So, I think all that's left to do is to basically review the game. So I think in the next episode, I'll sort of fire things up again, and sit down to, to talk through my experience with Final Fantasy V. So thank you to everybody that's watched these last 60 hours of gameplay, and you'll be hearing a lot more thank yous and, you know, good vibes from me in the next video. So, I will see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Take care.